Hi, my name is Daniel Bystedt, and in this tutorial I will talk about handling multiple shots in one single Blender file. So this is a workflow that is suitable for a small project, a previous or a sequence handled by a small number of artists. And the benefit of using this workflow is mainly being able to work fast and handle a complex amount of shots with ease. And I will also show you some very cool tricks in the uh, video editor where you can edit shots at the same time as you are producing 3D content and animating. Let's have a look at the different scenes in this Blender file. So let's go up to the outliner and change this little button from view layer to scenes. So here you can suddenly see a list of all the scenes within my Blender file. And if I expand these, we can see objects and scene collections and things like that. So what is a scene? A scene is basically a container um, within your Blender file where you can put environments, models, animation, that kind of thing. So it's almost like a Blender file within a Blender file. And the benefit of using scenes is that you can reuse assets between different scenes and quickly switch between them. And you can have different cameras as well. So for instance, here you can see I have, uh, first I have a sequence number and a shot number and a name of uh, sort of the uh, sequence, I guess. So I can change to my space scene here. And here you can see I have different cameras and I can switch to any type of scene I want and just quickly go in and animate each and every scene. So that's really a fast workflow. Another way of switching between your scenes, uh, for instance, if you like to have the view layer here instead, you can switch scenes up here. So you can just write something like that. So let's have a look at how I share different objects between different scenes. So I usually keep a scene called assets in my Blender file. Let's change the view to something more readable. Okay, so here you can see I have my octopus, jellyfish, astronaut, that kind of thing. This octopus is actually linked from a file outside of this uh, Blender file. So this is called uh, referencing in Maya and in Blender it's called linking. So if I go up here and look at Blender file, I can see a bunch of uh, links to external Blender files. And I can see what is linked as well. So uh, let's say, for instance, that I want to put a uh, nice little hat on this octopus. Then I just make sure I have the um, octopus collection here. And if you want to create a new collection, you could do so by pressing that button and suddenly you have a new collection, which you can place within your scene collection or within another collection. I'll probably reference a uh, one of my talks about collections in the description in this video as well. So let's bring in the hat. Let's go file, link, and here we have the hat. And if I go into the interesting thing is that with linking, you can go into the Blender file that you want to link from. You can check all the uh, different objects here. So we have a hat, plane, sphere, etc. And I can also link a collection. So here we have a link called, or sorry, a collection called various junk. And here is a collection called hats. So I'm going to link that one. Great. So let's see where this ended up. So uh, currently it ended up here since I have my scene collection as my active collection. But I'm going to press M and move it into my octopus uh, collection. And I'm going to place the hat like 
like so. Very silly, but fun. Okay, so the idea is that since I have referenced or linked this octopus to other um, <coughs> uh, scenes, this will uh, affect, uh, <laughs> or the placement of the hat, hat will ripple uh, downwards to the other scene. So let's check if this uh, happened. So let's go here. I'm going to go to one of my octopus scenes, perhaps the last one. And look at that. He has the hat. And if I select the octopus here, it's just an instance of that entire... Um, as you can see, the hat is not parented or anything, so that's the thing I could uh, do, actually. So if I want to link in a um, collection from another scene, I can just create a collection instance, search for octopus, for instance, and um, I recommend that you set a nice filterable uh, string like AST or something um, to your collection so that you can quickly find the assets uh, that you want to instance. So here's another octopus that I can put in here as well and we'll just play that. Yeah, works nicely. But how does it work if I want to link a, um, an object to another scene? So here for instance <coughs> I have a um, a little fish. I'm just gonna Alt D that fish, and you can see it has some modifiers on it. So I'm actually gonna um, link this uh, with Control L, and here we have objects to scene, and I can choose that octopus scene I had. So now it's actually linked, and now I can delete this object. If I go to my octopus scene, it's right here. And this means that I could actually do a uh, some type of animation on it if I want to. Uh, location rotation, move it somewhere around here. Location rotation, and last frame. So I'm pressing just I here to insert keyframe. And now this object as an animation. And the nice thing about this is if I go back and remodel the fish uh, in my asset scene, this will ripple to uh, this fish that I have in this scene. And then I can uh, select it. I can go to object mode and I can, uh, I can check the mesh itself. And we can see that this mesh is used within uh, by two objects in this entire blended file. So if I duplicate it again and again and again, you can see that this number is increased. But now we're just going to delete this. So let's have a look at how you can set up multiple cameras in your scene. In Blender, you have your scene settings over here, and here you can assign the render camera that you want in your scene. If you want to have multiple cameras, you need to create markers along the timeline and then bind a camera to each marker. So you can see here, if I press zero, I can align my viewport to the active render camera, which is also possible to over here, view viewpoint camera. And if I move my frame to the timeline, you can see that the active camera switches. You can see that over here as well. So it switches between far cam and close cam. All right, so let's set up a whole new camera. I'm just gonna move to a new frame, create a camera, shift A, camera, like so. And I'm gonna go down here, marker, add marker, and then bind camera to marker. So you can see that I have my this camera selected. There we go. And now I can move this marker. 
and we can also align our uh, active camera to the current view by going to view line view align active camera to view control alt zero on the numpad like so very handy If you have a Blender file with multiple scenes, cameras, animation, etc., there are some amazing things that you can do in the video editor in Blender. So let's switch to my scene here called Video Edit, and I'm going to switch to the tab Video Editing as well. So here we can see a bunch of strips, and as I move through the timeline, um, all the shots play out in my yeah, preview here. The interesting thing about this is that these um, video sequences are not pre-rendered. These are actually streaming from the cameras in each scene. To prove that, I'm going to jump over to the space scene and I'm going to put a little monkey head there on the astronaut. Perfect. I'm going to switch back to video edit. And you can see down here, there's a bunch of buffered frames. So in order to refresh, I'll just hit Control R. And now we can see the head is there. So that's uh, a very quick and uh, easy way of doing video editing and see uh, a, you know, a live feed of what's happening in each scene. Now, if I want to add a new strip, I can choose add then scene and I'll just choose something like the octopus scene perhaps. Here we go. And I can slip and slide this as I want. And it uses the, if I select the scene strip, go down here, I can actually change um, which scene I want to show. We can take another octopus scene perhaps. Perhaps um, this one. Yeah. And it uses the, um, by default, the render camera from that scene. But I can also use any camera within the entire Blender file. So I'll just use the closed camera. So that's weird camera angle. And I can actually cut this. I can move it. And then in this one, I can just choose another camera. So that's a really fast way of editing and setting up a pre-visualization or just a concept of something. And needless to say, if you render out the animation from this timeline, you will get the entire uh, movie that you have created. So that's a great way of batch rendering multiple scenes as well. Now, when you're trying out different things in your project, you might want to save some render time. So for instance, you can set your resolution to 50% or so. However, it's important to realize that this setting is just per scene. So now we're in a scene called video edit which means that our source scene, where all the 3D elements are rendered, is still at 100% uh, resolution. So if we change to that scene, we can see, yep, it's still at 100%. However, there is a great add-on. Go to Preferences, Add-ons, right, Render. Here it is, Copy Render Settings by Bastion. Wonderful. Let's activate that. And now, if we're in our video editing scene, we have our render resolution at 50%. And let's go to the render settings. And if we scroll down a bit, there's something called copy settings. So we want to set a scale. And if we just scroll down a bit, I think we can see a little check mark somewhere. Over here, resolution percent, excellent. 
And here we can see which scenes will be affected by this. So let's just hit copy render settings. And here's our source uh, value, 50%. And if we change to any of the other scenes now, we can see that the resolution is at 50% as well. So that's really nice. Uh, if I render out this frame now, with F12, we can see that it has rendered in half the resolution. So, thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope it has been informative regarding uh, multiple scenes and assets and uh, cameras and video editing and whatnot in Blender. And uh, that's it for me. Bye-bye.